you're spending a thousand dollars on a red light therapy panel, you want to know it's easy to use, right? You don't want to have to be referring to the manual, pressing buttons multiple times to try to get them to work, and trying to interpret fancy codes and labels on the screen. In this video, what I'm doing is ranking 12 red light therapy panels and determining which ones are the easiest to operate. And of course, which ones are the worst. Hey guys, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com and welcome to round nine of my 2021 red light therapy comparison series. Behind me, I have 12 of the leading red light therapy panels uh, available in the market at the moment. Um, as you can see, not all of them are running. I wish, I wish I could get them all running, but it overloads my system. So six of them are going at the moment. Uh, it's actually throwing out quite a bit of heat, so I'm, I'm gonna cut these out. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. Hopefully you can see me a little bit better now as well. So yes, we're up to round nine. Now, this has been quite a, a journey so far and we still have two more scoring rounds to go. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, and you're thinking round scoring, what's going on? I highly recommend going back to the beginning of the series uh, where I introduce all 12 of these panels and um, break down how I'm gonna be testing them and ranking them. And the end goal is to find the best overall panel um, that you can get in the market today. Today, what we're looking at is operation. This looks at ease of use, ease of setup, um, how frustrating or how simple it is to get the panel to do what you want it to do, whether there's advanced functions, whether it has inbuilt timers, all these sort of things. Now, what's funny is back in 2019, when I did my first body panel comparison review, a lot of these panels were, were very basic, uh, very, very basic. Now here in 2021, we're seeing a massive advancement in terms of operations and, and menus and control settings and that, to the point where some panels are now using apps and Bluetooth and all that fancy stuff. But still, some of the panels behind me are still quite uh, basic. The funny thing is, some of those basic panels, now upon reflection, when you see some of these more advanced, advanced controls, you think, huh, maybe, maybe that's all we need. Anyway, what I've done is I've come up with a scoring system where I rate every panel, uh, I run through to see if it's got this, then I give it a point, et cetera. Uh, and I also take away points if there's frustrating things. That's helped me to determine uh, which panels are the best for this round and which panels are the worst. So, soon we'll be getting into that ranking system and I will be going through each panel and giving my brief rundown of what's good and what's bad. But if you wanna know more about any of these panels, I highly recommend uh, not only starting from the start of the series to get a good, good overview of each panel, but going off and watching my independent uh, review on any of these panels. Well, I've done reviews on most of these panels, Depending on when you're watching this, eventually I would have reviewed all of them. So those are comprehensive reviews, you know, some of them are about 40 minutes long. So if there is a panel you want to check out, and in those reviews I go into great detail on what works well, what doesn't. And I should also mention, if you did want to purchase any of these panels or you want to go straight to the product page, I've got a link below. Um, I've also got a discount code, discount code is Alex. It will save you a little bit of cash on any of these panels. So, okay, so as for my scoring system for this round, what I've done is I've got nine categories, all right? Uh, nine checklist items, I guess. And I go through each panel and if they achieve these, each thing, I give them a tick. So effectively, a panel can get nine points. However, I then can take off points for any negatives. Uh, one or two of these panels do have some like, you know, big, well not big, like rather frustrating things. So obviously they lose a point for that. So let me run through each of these checklist items. For the nine scoring items, we have is it easy to figure out with the manual? Can you plug it in and, you know, based on the labels on the buttons and the icons and all that, just figure it out? Most panels you can. There are some that you can't though. Does it have a built-in timer? It definitely helps if you're using one of these panels and it's got a built-in timer. The first gen products back in 2017, 18, 19, they didn't. Uh, in fact, some of the panels behind me still don't have them, but I can tell you now, having a timer helps big time. Thirdly, does it indicate what wavelengths are operating? You can't see near infrared light, the 850s, the 810s, the 830s, it's invisible, right? So sometimes you can have your panel running and you don't know if the LEDs are working or not. If there's a simple glowing LED or a way to tell if the near infrared's on or not, then uh, that's definitely a big plus. 
Next up I have whether you can select between these wavelengths, whether you want them both running or just one. So for instance, you just want the red light. So previously in 2019, some of these just had master power switches. Now with these newer panels, you can do it all through the control uh, menu. But again, not all panels do this today. Next I have, is it easy to press the button? Some buttons, simple, you can you get tactile feedback, whether it's a beep or there's movement in the buttons. Other buttons, I feel like you gotta jam it and push it and you don't even know if it's working. Next is whether the LEDs start glowing the moment you put power to the panel. Personally, I find this very frustrating. You plug it in at the wall and next thing you know, boom, the lights are glowing, you weren't quite prepared, you haven't set the menus. Yeah, it's just a pet peeve of mine, so I score for this. All right, so there's three more to run through. The next one is the main PowerPoint easy to access. Sometimes you just wanna cut power to the panel and you know maybe the PowerPoint's on the other side of the room or under the bed or something. So you wanna cut power on the panel itself. Some panels have a big power switch, easy to see, easy to reach. Other ones, it's very hard to reach. You gotta reach around, you gotta feel for it, not fun. Next, we have whether the panel can operate as a master uh, control panel if you're using multiple panels. So a lot of these panels behind me uh, support modular capability. That means you could buy another one, stack them together or side by side. You can then link them all up, power cables and data cables, and um, control all those panels from one menu rather than having to set a timer on one, set a timer on another one and do them all separately. So some panels support this, other panels don't. And finally, and this is something that I've only recently started uh, thinking about and mentioning in my reviews, but it is it is a nice to have, right? It's, it's where the power plug input is located on the back of the panel or the side of the panel. A lot of them have them up really high, so that means you've got to run that cable high to get to a power point on the floor, chances are you're gonna need an extension cord. Some, new, some panels now though are having their power point nice and low uh, down the bottom. That means you probably don't need extension cords. It's a big help. So what I have is quite a complex table here with all of the panels and whether they uh, achieve any of those checklist items I've just listed off. Now, it'll take me an hour to go through all of this, so I'm not gonna do it in this video. Two reasons. Firstly, I've covered all this stuff in much detail in each panel's review. So check out those other re reviews. So for instance, if you're interested in the Red Light Rising 900, um, go watch that review because I'll talk, all, I'll talk all about operation, the pros and cons, etc. Secondly, what I'll be doing with this table is publishing it over at alexfergus.com. I'm running a blog in, in conjunction with this video series. So you can go over there and get the full breakdown. So instead what I'm gonna do in this video is simply rank the panels from worst to best in regards to operation. When I talk about a specific panel, I'm gonna mention any massive pros or massive cons, all right? If there's something that really sticks out or something that, you know, it was the only panel to get a point in, I'll mention it. Okay, so working from the bottom up, in last place we have the LightPath LED uh, large multi-wave panel. Now, if you've been following my stuff for a while, on YouTube, you may have seen my first impressions video with this with this panel. Uh, that's where, in those videos, I, I the panel turns up, I unbox them, I plug them in, and I you know share my first impressions. This was like so frustrating. In fact, even after using this for a week or so, it was still frustrating. Um, so I highly recommend checking out that video for a bit of a laugh. Uh, I then went on to interview the founder of LightPath LED, and um, you know he talked me through a few things and was aware of some of the faults as well. Unfortunately though, it's just a panel that's really hard to operate. The buttons are hard to push, the indicator lights are so faint, um, there's a pulsing mode in this panel and you can accidentally enable that and then next thing you know, the whole panel's pulsing and it, yeah, it's just, it's just very full on. Fortunately though, it does come with a little remote and that makes operating it so much better. I just wish some of these buttons were on here rather than the, the limited buttons on the panel. And last place, we have the LightPath LED. It actually got a score of three out of nine. Next up, in 11th place, we have the Gemba Red Reboot. Now this got a score of four out of nine. To be honest, it's such a basic panel that it just simply doesn't have all the buttons and features that these other panels have. There's no wavelength indicator, there's no wavelength switch, there's no timer, nothing like that. So again, they got four out of nine. In 10th place, we have the Red Rush 720. This has got a score of five out of nine. Uh, remember, this is quite an older panel and it is a very basic panel. It's the cheapest panel here, um, which does mean, you know, you can't expect top of the range bells and whistles and fancy control panels. Uh, so I've got a score of five out of nine. It has some things like wavelength indicators and um, switches to alternate between them, but you don't have uh, any timers. Uh, you don't have the ability to um, 
operate multiple panels from this from this one sensor or anything like that. Okay, so in eighth place, we have two panels sitting on eighth place. We have the Saito LED um, Triplex, and we have, wait for it, the Rug Pro. Uh, both of these panels got six out of nine, uh, and that, you know, you're starting to get to a point where, you, yes, you have control panels, um, yes, you have wavelength indicators, but there's a few things missing. So for instance, the Saito LED turns on the second you add power to it. The Rug Pro doesn't have the ability to control multiple panels, for instance. So again, you're, you're six out of nine. They're not bad panels from an operation point of view. There's just better ones on the market. All right, so that leaves seven panels. Now, out of these seven panels, one got a score of eight and the rest all got seven points. Remember, this is out of nine. Effectively, that means there's six panels at second place. I'm gonna run through all of these and uh, I'll share any highlights or lowlights with the panels. Um, but all of these got seven out of nine. So they're all, they're all good panels from an ease of use operation point of view. There is one that I'll get to soon. That was the clear, well, not a clear winner. That actually had got one point above it. Uh, but any of these panels, you know, you're gonna be happy with from an operation point of view. On in seven points, we have the Red Light Rising Advantage 900. Now this missed out on two points. Uh, the main power point is, there we go. It's right smack bang in the middle, quite high. So even to reach around it, it's, it's a bit difficult. So that's where it loses a point. And secondly, it doesn't have a low power point. The power points plug in all the way up here. So you lose a lot of run there in the cable. Next, we have the Mito Pro 1500 by Mito Red Light. Now this actually had an eight out of nine, but then there was one negative. So that brought it back down to seven. So the only thing missing out of the nine checkpoint items was the low power plug. So the power plug for this is quite high. It sits up around here. Um, you know, again, a bit of a bummer, especially given the length of this panel, it could have easily been down here. And the negative for this panel was by default, when you turn this on and you just hit start, it defaults to 10 minutes, right? And the lights start going, which is great. But the near infrared lights don't turn on automatically. You have to go in and manually enable that, which is, it's not like a deal breaker, like, oh my God, don't buy it. But it is a little bit frustrating. And I think there were one or two times when I turned it on, hit start, and then I thought, oh God, the near infrared ones aren't going. Um, because again, you can't see the near infrared ones. So a little bit of an annoyance, this is a slightly older model now. I know the guys from MitoRed have um, made some tweaks and improvements on this panel. Uh, so they may have fixed that. So by default, it would be enabled because to be honest, it's like a, probably a 30 second fix for an engineer. Um, but hey, it lost the point because of that. So it ended up at second equal as well. Next, we have the Blue Blocks Hive. Uh, so again, seven out of nine, it missed two points. Uh, high, high plug input. Now my plug is actually way up high here on this panel, which means it doesn't even sit hard up against the wall. You'll see how it's, it's very loose there. Um, I know they've fixed this though, so I'm not, I'm not penalizing them for this. They've now moved it onto the side, I believe, but it's still up high. So it loses a point there. And secondly, it doesn't have a modular control command system built in. Then we have the Infrared Max. So again, seven out of nine, this missed a point for the position of the power plug again, and uh, it turns on by default as soon as you get power to it. A little bit annoying. Okay, now we have the Platinum LED Biomax uh, 600. So this also got seven out of nine. I guess in a way I was a little bit harsh here because um, I didn't give it a point for the wavelength indicator, right? So, so the Biomax 600 has a really neat control system. It's a touchscreen control system um, with nice, easy to use menus, get nice feedback when you're pressing the buttons. It works really, really well. No other uh, panel has done this today. Um, so it was pretty exciting when this was released. Now with this control panel, you can actually go in and, and specify how much power you want go into the red lights or the near infrared lights. You can go 100%, 50%, 2%, anything you want, right? And it's just a sliding scale, which is really, really cool. It works nicely. Uh, personally though, I usually run these at 100% or I drop them right back down for like ambient background mode where you put it at one or 2%. So, but some people may like, you know, playing around with it and experimenting with it. So that's cool. The only thing is when it's running, you don't know if those near infrared um, lights are operating or not. There's no little light or indicator on the on the on the screen. Um, so, for instance, you know if you're sharing this panel with someone, or you do a session where it's only red light, and then you don't cut all the mains power to it, you just turn it off at the unit. Then you come back the next day and you just hit start straight away. 
you may not know that the near-infrared's not running, for instance, um, whereas a lot of these other panels have a little LED on the side, so you see it straight away. So that's where Biomax lost a point, which is a bummer because, like I said, it is a really nice controls, control menu. And they also missed out on a point because of the position of the power cable. Again, it's up quite high. All right, and there was one more panel on that got seven out of nine, and that's the Solbasium Optics 180. Um, this is very similar to the infrared. It turns on as soon as you give it power, and um, the power plug input is quite high. So, that leaves one, and that's the one behind me. The Juve, the Juve Solo. This came out with eight out of nine points for this round. Uh, it actually scored nine out of nine for all of my checklist items, but then it lost one point because of a negative, which I'll get to soon. Okay, so the Juve Solo has, it's quite a simple control system, but I like simple, it works really well. It does, you know, the button's are easy to press, there's a little indicator light to tell you whether the button's on or not. The screen is nothing fancy, you know, it's not a nice like LCD, you know, uh, multi-pixel screen, it's just the old school screen, but it's kind of all you need, right? It's easy to figure out without a manual, it's got a built-in timer, it's got wavelength indicators, uh, you can select what wavelengths run or not, the buttons are super easy to press, the nicest buttons out of all these panels, in fact. Um, it doesn't turn on straight away, you gotta hit the power button to start it. Um, the main power button is easy to use, it's up here on the side, which is great. You can control multiple units from this one, which is awesome. The power plug is in the best position possible, right down here, uh, and it runs off to the side. That's that's amazing. I think there were only two panels that had a low power plug, by the way. The Gemberade Reboot was the other one. Um, so it ticks all the boxes, right? But there was one negative. Now, with this panel, um, there are quite a few advanced options. You've got the pulsing mode, you've got ambient mode, uh, you've got you can enable beep settings, so beep at halfway, for instance, letting you know you know it's time to turn around, which I really like. And I'm sure when this panel was released, there was also an alarm clock mode, uh, but it seems to be removed from the app now. Speaking of apps, this is where it gets the negative. Some of these advanced functions have to be operated through the app. That's the only way to do it. So if you want to enable ambient mode, like I said with the Biomax, you can do that in the control panel then and there. If you want to do it with the Juve, you got to get an app. To get the app, you got to set up an account, you got to link it, you got to connect them all, then you do the adjustments. Cool. But sometimes, you know, you're just standing by a red light therapy panel, you just want to use it, right? You don't want to get your phone out and play around with stuff. So that's why I gave it a negative. Simply because some of those advanced functions um, are only accessible through that. It doesn't really matter in the scheme of this body comparison series though because it's come out on top anyway, so it's gonna get maximum points. I just wanted to mention these things, and again, I go into much greater detail about the Juve and operations and ease of use in my Juve Solo 3.0 review, so be sure to check that out. Okay, so that's everything. That's me ranking these panels in regards to ease of use and operation. I've actually used all of these panels for at least half a dozen sessions. Some of them I've used for many, many months. Uh, I wanted to make sure I've done that so I can pick up on any little issues and, and things that really annoyed me. And that's what I've used. Uh, that experience is what I used to develop this checklist. Again though, check out the reviews on all these panels uh, on my YouTube channel because I do get into some more nitty gritty details. So with that update, we continue to see the Mito Pro 1500 on 84 points. Uh, so they're well ahead now. Um, you're gonna have to say that they're gonna come out number one here, but there is still one more round and well, you know, anything could happen. So they're in good position, uh, but yeah, we, we've got to wait for the, we'll wait to the finish before we make any concluding remarks. Uh, the Infrared Max and the Biomax 600 remain on second equal. Solbasium Optics 180 on fourth, 64 points, and they've got a good uh, good lead now ahead of the Lightpath LED. Lightpath LED placed last in that um, round, so that gap has now lengthened to to uh, five points, so you'd have to say Solbasium are, are looking really good for a fourth place, which is um, which is great, you know, good on them. Uh, light path LED, yeah, bit of a bummer there. It, it really is a, a frustrating panel to use. I know though that they're aware of that and they are working on it, so maybe, maybe for a future uh, edition, they won't score as badly. Red Light Rising in the middle on six. Uh, Jimbo Red Reboot, quite a basic panel, uh, doing well at seventh. Um, Juve, I think they moved up one or two points there, uh, positions on uh, to 10th. I think they'll come home strong though uh, in the everything else round because yeah, if you've seen my reviews on the Juve solo, they, there is, are some nice design features. So I expect them to, to jump up a few points at the end. Um, that was their first win though, it's the first time they've scored at 12 points. 
And then we have the Red Rush 720, and then in last place, Blue Locks Hive. All right, guys, that's everything for this round. I hope you enjoyed it. If I missed anything, or if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button because I have one more round. Round 10 is coming up, and in that round, we'll be looking at everything else. Anything I've missed, I'll be adding into that round. So. Hang out for that one. After we've done that, we'll announce my winners and not only will it be the overall winner, I'm gonna do some special award winners as well. So you'll wanna keep an eye out for that. Uh, and I'll also be doing a bit of a debrief video and um, taking any questions that you guys may have had as well. So start thinking about them, hit the subscribe button, keep an eye out for these other videos and um, we'll speak to you soon.